Okay, I'm back here with Marty M. Miner, the founder, one of the original founders and creators of a legitimate, I love saying that, the legitimate men's health center that doesn't, you don't have to see a million advertisements. They don't advertise. They've been successful at the Miriam Hospital. He's a clinical professor of family medicine and urology, Brown University. Plus, he's a good friend. And I'm not just saying he's a good friend. He's actually a good friend. And I just want to make this segment two or three minutes because I think there's enough mojo here, Marty. I'm going to read to you in 2018, this was released in the Journal of Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism. This was from the Endocrine Society Clinical Practice Guidelines. They are now recommending measuring fasting morning total testosterone to be accurate. We recommend confirming the diagnosis of hypogonadism by repeating the measurement of morning fasting testosterone. You know, people talk about fasting when it comes to cholesterol, but I think if you look at data, there's enough small studies to suggest that a small quantity of men, which is still statistically significant, essentially they may need to fast before they get a total testosterone because if they eat a big meal that morning, then get their testosterone, it might artificially drop that number for a few hours. But if you don't, if you look at most laboratory websites, they do not recommend testosterone as of yet as a fasting test. Uh, do you recommend it as a fasting test? And why can't we recommend it as a fasting test? The floor we is yours. We can recommend it as a fasting test. We often get it with other fasting tests, including a fasting blood sugar and an A1C. Um, and we get um, a fasting lipid profile. But the, um, the American Urologic Association does not recommend testosterone be done in a fasting specimen. Um, I don't know why. Um, I don't know if, I, I don't know the data. I, um, as to if it if it's lowered by food, as you point out, um, if it is, it would be important. I've often wondered why we get a morning testosterone to begin with when it's supposedly at its peak, when most men are symptomatic um, afternoon. <laughs> um, uh, anyway, but we do that because we have to, in order yeah. for insurance to cover it. That's so, interesting. So, so you still, so you still, I mean, you still do morning ones and you do them with the other things. So you still do them fasting anyway. We do. We tend to do them fasting because we're doing them with other bloods, but um, in follow-up, we don't do them fasting. That's interesting. I think, well, I appreciate your comments on it, but from my standpoint, I think we're a few years off till the AUA, I believe, and others will recommend it as a fasting test because a certain sp a number of men who especially get high carbohydrate meals, a large insulin response, will have a mm. temporary reduction in testosterone. I, but, but what's interesting is by serendipity, you do it anyway, right? Because you, you right. deal with men's health right. conditions. And, right. and so arguably, preliminary data would suggest you're getting an accurate one. But I just think it's interesting that some of these groups are now mentioning it. So I just right. wanted to mention it that I... I'm not going to make a comment, but just watch this topic. Testosterone is a fasting blood test. That will be a future interesting topic that even Marty Miner might answer through his database. And I think <laughs> that answer is going to be that we should be a fasting blood test. Thanks, Marty, for your time. I appreciate the segment.